sharing screen. All right, so the, hello again. This is episode, I don't know, five or six. And we're going to continue working on our poem and trying to make it, uh, we're getting to the point of thinking a bit more about meter, I think. We're not quite ready for rhyme. Uh, at least I haven't quite figured out how do I want to do that with this example. So we're going to go with meter for this one. Um, a little bit more with meter. We've, been, we've looked at syllables. We need to look at stressed and unstressed syllables. So let's take a look at that with our Jupyter notebook situation. Starting and stopping it like this, by the way, helps me kind of see the beginning and end of the different videos. Um, I'm, just, I'm filming these all at once, so it's like it's easier to see them, you know, when they're separated. So let's take a look at Secret Peaches and see how it's doing. So this is where we left it uh, with two functions, get food and get animal, which both will return the appropriate number of syllables and the uh, food should be pluralized, and it is secret breadfruits. Uh, the thing I wanted to work on for this episode is this value here, the beaches, uh, because that's going to be the tricky thing to rhyme with the foods that we have right here. Uh, in fact, as I started, play I played around with it a little bit and just kind of finding plural place names that rhyme with plural fruits, I think is not going to be a big, a, a very long list. So uh, I, I think we need to adapt the template slightly to make it a bit more, um, you know, have it, give it a bit more variety. Uh, in fact, beaches and peaches, I couldn't think of any others off the top of my head as far as like places and fruits. Um, maybe you can think of some, great. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead with a slightly different template as, as you'll see here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, uh, the, the main thing I wanna shift is uh, the, the type of place where our character is. And it's not, I think, instead of just a beach, which is a generic kind of place, uh, I think we'll get a lot more variety if we create specific places. And I'm just thinking US states and cities, uh, just because those are pretty long lists and we can work with those pretty easily using the PyCorpora uh, database. So I've got this here um, already pulled up. This is the, the Corpora database for the list of US cities. And as you can see here, this, this structure is a little bit different uh, than the other ones, whereas the other one was just a single list with the names of the things in it, like the names of all the fruits and the names of all the things here. You got a slightly different structure where we have a list of objects, and so each of these objects is uh, a dictionary where th it's a list. Of, it, it's a list, but each item in the list has these three parts: city, state, and population. So we've got a city, New York, population, uh, state, New York, population, all that. So like that's a it's a slightly different data structure that we'll have to work with in a slightly different way. Uh, excuse me, in our code. So I don't know. Let's try it. Um, so I've already, yeah, I've, I've been trying a few things on here just to make sure. I wanted to make sure that the pronouncing library actually had some place names in it, and it looks like it at least has uh, Jacksonville, so that's a good sign that there's other, um, other cities in the pronouncing, uh, available to pronouncing so that we can uh, learn what we need to about these names and make sure that they fit our pattern. So let's get a list of cities. We'll just make, um, yeah, we'll just see what we got. So PyCorpora.data, no dot geography all right so that's a corpus loader that's great so we want u.s cities here they are uh, and they're of course that structure kind of data so we want to get just to get one at a time we need we would need to work our way through this list uh, but only pull out the um, the, the city name um, yes yeah, so we actually have this is the actual object we want. So now we're actually, it's a list named cities with each of these as a city with each of these, the name you know, in there stored in the value city. So we can use this like any other list. So we can add the square bracket notation and then just give it an index to ask about. So if we wanted to just look at item number, I don't know, 56, uh, that's Anaheim, it turns out. And so Anaheim, as you can see, has three parts. It's got a city, uh, it's got a state and a population. So if we want to refer to a particular part of that, we have to name it off of the end of this thing that we've, this long thing now that we're constructing. And we just want the city. So we'll go like that and just get the Anaheim. And that's the part we're interested in. Um, we could do states too, but we'll just do city names uh, for this example. So Anaheim uh, is this city and that's what we're gonna look, you know, that's, that's how we call it. Of course, we, wanna, we don't want Anaheim, we want a random city. And so we need to um, make sure that we can do that with the random choice thing. So this is what we did before, but this is not gonna work. Uh, well, that's syntax, but it's also not gonna work uh, because it's, uh, interestingly, 
it, it's going to, in this case, it's treating this, the name Anaheim. Um, the thing that we want to change isn't the, um, the part of the, the city name. We want to change which city name has been selected. We want to change the thing that's 56 here. We want to make that a different one. So what we need to do is construct this in a slightly different way. So we want to pull a random city like this, um, but we only want the city part of it. And I think we can just, let's see, other languages you can do this. Let's see if we can do this here. We can actually we can add an index off the end of the function just to get uh, the city. Sometimes you can do this. Hey, yeah, it works, great. So I just added the, um, I'm calling, so I'm doing random and I'm invoking the choice attribute as you see here and then uh, I'm passing this PyCorpora loader into it, and then I'm just accessing the city part of the thing that was returned from the PyCorpora loader. So that's all the way over here. I'm sort of treating this whole statement like it was the name of a list, and then I'm asking for the index value for the, the value that's returned from the index named city. Uh, so that's pretty good. All right. So, and actually, this is a dictionary, not a list, but it's a, it looks like a list when you access it by name. This is like what's called a hash or an associative array in some other languages. Um, but in Python, it's called a dictionary, which I think is pretty good. So we can get different cities, Palm Desert, Adena, Lacey, Mill Creek, Murfreesboro. Hey, I know Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, Palm Desert. Um, okay, so on and on, uh, we can get different ones, right? And that's the, that's the same kind of thing we've done before, just we had to construct this a slightly different way. Um, so we're gonna make a new city, a new, a new function. We'll call it get city, I guess. Uh, let's do it down here. Get city and just like we did before, just return very simply the value that we've been constructing uh, just to make sure that it works. So we'll process that. Oops, what did I forget? Oh, right. Because this is Python 3, I need to put parentheses around my print statement. And there I've defined it. So now if I call the function get city by name, then it will just give me the value there. Actually, I don't want to print it, do I? I want to return it. I'm going to be printing it later. I don't, I don't need to print it twice. So there we go. Um, I don't know if you noticed, by the way, but you notice, see how this has quote marks on it around it now. That's telling me that this is a string value. Um, before, when you print it, it just prints the word. But when you just ask it, what is the thing here, uh, using the notebook here, it's just going to give you the value, and it gives you this. If it were a list, it would show you this in square brackets. If it were uh, a dictionary, it would have curly brackets. If it were a special object, like a text blob, it would say text blob. Uh, but in this case, it's just the, you know, it's just the value itself. Um, if I wanted to, I could also do a print statement around here just to get, you know, get this, the, the city name by itself. But I don't, I don't need to print it yet. I'm going to be printing it eventually uh, all the way back up here. I'm going to add it into the template, uh, the format constructor. Okay, so we want to know a few things about our city name. So if we look at the template, let me go back to the template here. Uh, the part that we're interested in is the beaches which is three syllables. So I am a puma, I live near the beaches. If you look back at our scan here, it's this part here. The, uh, those three syllables where stress is on the middle syllable. So the first syllable of the word beaches, that's what we're trying to match here. Three syllables with stress on the middle. Um, what I'm thinking uh, is our, our new template could say, I live near um, Anaheim. Although that doesn't match the right stress, but you'll see that we can, we can test for that. Um, so I live near, uh, what's the city with, that kind of pattern. Um, well, if we were using states, I don't know why Missouri came to mind. So if I live in, I live near Missouri, you could say that. Um, but I don't know, actually, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm not sure how many cities will have this pattern. So this is part of our, our testing work to see if that's going to work. Uh, if not, we could go to state names like I live in Missouri. I live in Virginia. Hey, that works. I live in Virginia. It's true also. So uh, let's go back to this function and figure out how to do some work on the get city function. In fact, I want to go ahead and just move this up to this other place where I was defining functions just to sort of keep things together because I will probably need to use some similar things in this um, in this area. So we're going to make it do the same thing. We'll call it keepers uh, again. Just you know, it's a convention that I seem to have created here, and we want to uh, go through. That a list. We're going to go through the city in PyCorpora. I'm going to select all that. PyCorpora. I can't really select things. I know that's invalid syntax. It's not letting me select correctly. What's happening? Ah, I don't know. My, my Python notebook is going crazy. 
I want to select these things. All right, so I'm going to try just to save this and then reload this page and see if it'll clear that out. Uh, what's happening? Okay, well, that was weird, but it seems to be okay now. Okay, so this is my for loop. I'm looping through the list of cities. Uh, that's weird. Okay, so, but anyway, so the thing I need is just, isn't, okay, I'll show you what we got right now. Do this. Um, right now I'm doing a print statement on city just to kind of check what value is being stored in this temporary uh, iterator variable when I run through the loop, uh, just to make sure that it's something that makes sense. So when I run the get city thing, yeah, okay. So when I run the get city thing, I'm getting every object uh, again, and I'm getting like all three of those values that have names, city, state, population. Uh, let's see if, I don't know if this will work, but let's try it. What if I can just ask for the city in the temporary thing? Uh, let's see, maybe, no, I guess not. Okay, um, that doesn't work that way, but uh, I can do it down here. So I can just say get the city value whenever we, we work with it. So, okay, that works. That, that's, uh, that makes sense. So I'm, I'm asking for, so I'm running through each, each dictionary object and I'm gonna get um, only the city value. That's the only part I actually care about in here. So I, I could put that into another variable within this loop, but just to kind of, you know, limit the number of variables, I'm, I'm not. Okay, so city is the thing I have and I need to run some checks on it like I did before. I wanna know how many syllables are, are in that and I wanna make sure that there are three, first of all. So I'm gonna do some things that are similar to what I did up here in the uh, animals one. So I need to get a pronunciation list first. I like the type. And here, instead of giving it the name of the variable, like here, I'm asking, all the way over here. So here I'm asking for just animal because that's the name of this particular iterator. Uh, down here in cities, I'm asking for a city, but I don't need just the whole city object. I need the specific part of it that has, I'll move that up. Uh, I just need this, the specific part of it that has, uh, ha has the name of the city in it. So like I'm not dealing with population or the state. So here I need to give it city, city. So it kind of looks redundant, I guess, but should work. Um, and again, like before, some of these probably won't have pronunciations in the pronouncing library. So I need to make sure that before I do anything else that I check for, check that that exists. And if it does, then I'll proceed. And if not, uh, I will um, just go on to the next one. So I'll copy and paste this code here so I can just change it. In fact, this should all be this, actually this is the same now because syllable counts temporary, pronunciation list is the same uh, local variable and uh, this should be fine. Uh, I just need to append Okay, great, so let's see how this looks. Awesome, okay. Uh, there is one problem with this, but you can see that it actually returned a very long list of city names, which is the basic thing I wanted. The problem, as you can see, is that uh, I didn't change the syllable count that I'm checking for. Instead of checking, because uh, I want three syllable names, in this case, I only, I've been checking for two or less. So I want exactly three in this case. So I'm gonna go with, change that to an equal sign, and then three. There we go, so Chicago, Jacksonville, Columbus, Seattle, Washington, Baltimore, and as you kind of look through this, you can see there's actually quite a few that have the same stress pattern that we need, zero, one, zero. Uh, so that makes sense. So these are all cities that have three syllables in them, that the pronouncing library knows how to talk to these and understand them. Uh, so now we need to figure out what the stress pattern of these are, and we're gonna add that test for the appropriate stress pattern in this area here where we're constructing this temporary keepers list. Uh, so we need to go back to the pronouncing libraries documentation, uh, the tutorial and cookbook to find out how to understand uh, stresses. Uh, and as you can see, there's actually a pretty helpful explanation of how to do this. So um, we have to do this similar kind of thing where we construct uh, the phones list and then uh, the pass that object into this stresses attribute and see what we get. So let's see what we get with a few examples before we try to add that to our function. So, um, so I will just grab this here. 
Yes, actually, this is very similar to the counting syllables example. Um, okay, great. So I just use a different variable name, which is fine. Um, we'll call it, you know, I'm going to go ahead and call this pronunciation list because that will let me reuse this later. So pronunciation list equals pronouncing that someone's the word snappiest is the example. Okay, that's not the word we're interested in, but this is the example code. So we'll start with the example, make sure the example works the way that uh, the documentation says it should, and then if it does, we will proceed. And what happens? Phones list, oh right, because this is, I changed the name here. Oh, I did it wrong, again. Pronunciation list, there we go. 102, great, that's what we wanted. <laughs> so that means it's correct. So we have, um, in this case, 102, that refers to the, uh, the stresses of the different syllables. As you can see for the example, the explanation here, uh, one is primary stress. So in our example, that's like what I had I'd written as a plus sign, and then zero is unstressed, which is what I had in the, um, in the uh, as a minus sign in my example for, for scanning that line. Okay, so we've got 102 for snappiest. Let's just try uh, Jacksonville. So Jacksonville actually is the same, that's interesting. Um, let's try another one, Gainesville. Saw that on the list before, I happen to used to live in Gainesville, so um, that's why that occurred to me. Okay, so we see here, actually, this is interesting. So it called uh, the Ville part of Gainesville, not Gainesville, it didn't call it unstressed, it called it secondary stress. So it's um, something to keep in mind, I guess, that there are gonna be some of these that um, to either a stress value of two or zero might be appropriate for adding this in. So in terms of matching our pattern, the beaches, uh, it could be zero, one, zero, or it could be two, one, two, or, or whatever, as long as the one is the center column, uh, the center syllable of those, I guess, is probably fine. So that's probably what we should check for. Okay, so let's find out how to add this in. So again, we've got this very long list of cities. We've got uh, Chicago, Jacksonville, and so on. Uh, let's figure out how to do something here. This is where we tested for the syllable number so let's add another test in here, and I'm just gonna keep nesting these because that makes it easier to see what you're doing. Uh, let's do another test in here to figure out uh, where the stresses are. So we'll call, it, we'll call it stresses, just store this in a variable to make it easier to check for, because we're gonna do a bit more work on it than just naming it. So we'll do stresses and, um, what was it? We already have the phones for word as, as pronunciation list, so we need to, pr yeah, that's all we gotta do. We gotta just pass it to pronouncing. Pronouncing, pronouncing, because uh, we already have, so you notice we already have pronunciation list as the thing that pronouncing has constructed. So we can pass that same thing into it again, uh, but we want to pass it into the stresses attribute of the pronouncing library and see, uh, see what happens. This is, this is a problem. These words are very similar, pronunciation list. Okay, so we'll add, yeah, let's just do another, like, just a kind of rough check, check here uh, to print stresses to make sure we have a set of things that, that actually kind of make sense. So this is gonna print the stresses for all of the three syllable cities that it found. Let's see, what's the problem? Expect a string or bytes by context. Miss something? Oh, right. So I didn't pass it a string or a byte like object. I passed it a list. I forgot that pronunciation list is a list. Uh, so I actually just need the first item of that. So that's what happened there. Okay, great. There we go. Excellent. So now I have a, a series of numbers uh, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, and these refer to stress patterns. The ones I'm interested in, and the only ones I want to keep now are the ones that look like this 0, 1, 0, or um, I don't know what else there might be, but 0, 1, 0 is going to be what most of these are, I think. And those are the ones that have the center, the middle syllable stress. So I need to check for that. So I've got this now stored in this variable stresses. So I just need to add another conditional here that check, checks for that to make sure that it, it matches. So I could do it a couple ways. I can check for uh, if stresses just is, uh, no, it did tell me it's a string, not a number. So 
I will check it like this to see if the strings match. Uh, then we will add it to the keepers list and print keepers. Let's see if this works. It did not. So what am I missing? Let's try um, equal sign for that check. There we go. Uh, so z this is going to give me all the words that are stressed 0, 1, 0. So this looks pretty good. This is a nice, decent list of, of cities. Um, but as I saw before, it's possible that one, either the first or the last syllable could be a secondary stress, which is a, a zero or a two. So the only syllable I care about actually is the, uh, the second one, the middle one. So I think what we can do is, even though stresses is a string, so it's like a, it's a, you know, it's text, I think we can refer to the parts of it with indexes the same way we would for items in a list. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So if I had some text called uh, and just said hello, right, so that's just, that's text. It's not a list. A list normally would look like, um, okay. Uh, another variable, we'll call it this, equals a list. Um, we would say one item, two item, et cetera. So those are, those are two different things, right? So this is, the text is a, uh, string and then another variable is, is a list and you would refer to them that way. Actually, just to make it easier to type, I'll call this AV. Um, so AV, AV, I would refer to the items in this list by indexes. So AV zero is one, AV two is two. Right, or the, so this is how we would normally work our way through the list. But you can do the, use that same sort of that square bracket reference thing to point to positions in a string as well. At least I'm pretty sure you can. Let's just see. Uh, so text one is, oh great, do it. Yeah, you can. So text one is actually, uh, the letter E, that makes sense. Text zero should be the, the capital H. Yeah, so now we've got this going and this is gonna be how we can check for that middle value in uh, the stresses list, uh, or the stresses string, which um, we're gonna treat like a list. So we are here, so we actually only need to check for the middle value, which is gonna be the second, which we reference with the index one. So you remember you start with indexes counting at zero. And I only care about making sure that's a one. So let's see, this should give me a similar list, but a longer list, great. So I can see, yeah, I mean, it's not super much longer, but it is a bit longer. So uh, for example, it starts with Chicago now. So Chicago probably, I would guess uh, the, the first syllable is probably a secondary stress, um, but it doesn't really matter. The point is now I have a list of words that should work in our template, at least kind of. So uh, let's add that in as it'll be the last thing for this episode. So we're at, um, I live near, we're gonna replace the beaches with uh, another value. And since we already have um, zero and one, the next one would be two that we'll add here. And the order of those numbers in the template refer, are gonna be the order that they're given in this formatter. So uh, the third one that I'm gonna give with the index two here uh, is gonna be get city. And, oh wait, I need to make sure Git city actually just returns one city and not all of them. So I need to have it, um, get rid of these. Just return one of these, let's see. There we go, that might work. Uh, and let's say, I'm gonna change my template to say I live near uh, and then get city, okay, let's see if this works. Great, I am a boar, I live near Kissimmee. When I'm alone, I eat secret guavas. Not bad, uh, I'm an ape, but we, we, feel we need to fix the A and N, uh, you know, the right, you know, uh, articles there, but we're getting close. So I am an ape, I live near Manteca. I don't know where that is, but at least I know how to pronounce it because I know it matches the stresses that I, that I need it to. Uh, when I'm alone, I eat secret nuts. Secret nuts. I am elk, I live near Chicago. When I'm alone, I eat secret kumquats. All right, well, we have meter. Um, we have different place names. We don't have rhyme yet, but we can get there with the pronouncing library. Uh, it's gonna be a bit tricky, and I think it's gonna require some refactoring of what we've got right now, but I think this is pretty good for today. I think I'm gonna stop filming for today with this episode and then uh, go back and edit these, put these on YouTube, see how it looks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Actually, don't like and subscribe, it doesn't matter. All right, thanks, bye, that's it.